When you think of American wines, your taste buds might expect something from Napa or Sonoma or the Finger Lakes. California, Washington and New York and Oregon are the top wine producing states. But it might be time to raise a glass to Texas. Manuel Bajorcas in Dallas met the winemakers pouring their ingenuity into the Lone Star State. Good morning. We are inside Specs, a Texas chain known for its selection of wines from all around the world. But this section right here is for wines from a lot closer to home. Texas is now the fifth largest wine producing state and looking to get bigger. Texas is known for cowboys, longhorns, and barbecue. You can now add something else to the list, wine. Cattle and oil in Texas has always been keen. Now in Texas, we have cotton, cattle, and Cabernet. Neil Newsom is a pioneer of the Texas wine industry. He planted his first vines nearly 30 years ago. We weren't sure it was going to work. We took some old obsolete equipment and, and cut it up and made it real small so it could fit down in a vineyard. Today, Newsom's 144-acre West Texas vineyard produces 12 different varieties of grapes sold to 12 different wineries. I get picked on a lot down at the coffee shop, but slowly but surely we plant a few acres every year and, and our grapes have wound up in these wineries reserve programs, so it speaks for itself. Grapes have also become a new cash crop for farmers who are swapping out water hogging cotton plants for vines. In 2013, wine and grape production created nearly $2 billion in economic activity for the state. And with its high altitude, deep sandy soil, and dry climate, West Texas has become one of its key winemaking regions. The McPherson family has been bottling wines for more than 40 years. Kim McPherson's father, Doc, faced skeptics early on. When he built his first winery back in the late 70s, he made it out of cinder blocks because he worried the neighbors would vandalize it. Oh yeah, they shot at that winery out here in West Texas. They go, wine, no. And now they can't get enough of it. 90% of our, the grapes in this state are grown up here. Today, the McPherson's unique vintages are coveted by a new generation, millennials. They are not drinking what their parents drink. Now, mom and dad might be drinking Chardonnay and Cabernet and Merlot, and they really don't want to drink that. You give them a, a, a weird wine like Carignan or Mourvedre or Cinso or, or Roll or Viognier, they're going, oh, we like that. We love this. The American wine market is changing because we have this whole new segment of wine drinkers coming onto the market. Susan Castrava is executive editor of Wine Enthusiast. The magazine listed Texas Hill Country outside Austin among the 10 best wine travel destinations in the world last year. Texas is all about big things and Texan wines are big. They have big flavors, they're fruity, they're generous, they're fun wines. Buyers around the country are taking notice. Anthony Quinn, wine manager for Cleveland Park Wines in Washington, D.C., routinely stocks Texas vintages in his store. I can't believe every time I try them how good they are. I mean, they're really good. Texas is really right there with everyone else. McPherson aims to make his wine accessible to every table. Most wine is consumed within six hours after purchase. So that's where I want to be. I don't want you to say it, I want you to drink it. Mm, delicious. Now, the biggest challenge for those who would like to see Texas become a world-class wine region is ramping up production and keeping prices down. Some of the wines retail for about $15, which is often the cutoff for those experimenting with new varieties. Jeff? Oh, there's a lot of good things that come out of Texas. Like, like Nora O'Donnell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was a tee-up. <laughs> Texas lady. Just a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs>